cancer is when a man has a tumor that arises from the penis. This tumor can show up anywhere along the head of the penis, the foreskin, or the shaft of the penis. This is a very rare cancer in the United States and oftentimes the diagnosis can be missed because providers don't see it very often or men are nervous about having an exam of the sensitive area. The diagnosis of penile cancer is usually made initially on clinical examination of the penis and then once there is a suspicion of a diagnosis, a biopsy will need to be taken. In order to fully assess the stage of disease, a patient will need to undergo physical examination of lymph nodes where disease may have spread, including usually a CAT scan of the abdomen and pelvis and maybe a chest x-ray as well. Treatment options for penile cancer can vary greatly depending on the stage of disease. Many times for superficial disease, patients can just be treated with topical creams that may get rid of the disease. Other times for more advanced tumors, there may be surgical resection that is required. Often penile cancer spreads to the groin lymph nodes, and while surgery can be performed, we know that this is a danger sign that those cancer cells are about to move into the pelvis and from there beyond. And so we try to get ahead of the cancer by giving chemotherapy to get rid of the cancer that we see and what we don't see so that once the surgery is done, then we know that patients will have a better chance of staying cancer free. The chemotherapy regimen that we use consists of bisphosphamide, paclitaxel, and cisplatin. We were able to hospitalize our patients to get them through this treatment with minimal adverse reaction. We also have collaborations ongoing with several other cancer centers who see this rare disease and are testing some very new and exciting treatments for patients in whom the standard chemotherapy doesn't work. Penile cancer patients treated at USC have many surgical options. We try as hard as we can to provide penile sparing surgery whenever possible. We use partial penectomy, glanzectomy, plastic surgery techniques involving grafting and reconstructive technology to allow men to have as normal functionality as possible after surgery. Another important part of penile cancer treatment can often be inguinal lymph node dissection. And here at USC, we can complete this either with a traditional open approach or with a minimally invasive approach as needed. Here at USC, we can offer this uh, inguinal lymph node dissection endoscopically without the need to open the patient to excise all these lymph nodes. We can see in this uh, 3D animation video how we, uh, we perform this surgery and how we create this space and how we go behind the skin and how we navigate in that area and then how we dissect and how we extract all that lymph nodes. We put everything in a bag and then we extend one of the incisions and we remove that bag and then we just close that three incisions of one centimeter. The same patients that are candidate for open surgery are candidates for uh, robotic endoscopic uh, groin dissection and it's very important that uh, we can do it uh, robotically uh, without the needle to open. Testis cancer is among the most common solid organ malignancy in young people under 40 years old. Usually presentation is by a painless mass, sometimes painful, sometimes just an enlargement, and rarely might present because of the metastasis to lungs, brains, and so on and so forth. The most common way to diagnose it is just by physical exam, lab test to check for tumor markers, and ultrasound. Also at the time of diagnosis, we usually do CT scan of chest, abdomen, and pelvis to make sure it has not been spread anywhere else. The initial treatment usually is radical orchiectomy, removing the testis through an inguinal incision. Biopsy barely ever has any role in testis cancer. A 
About 70% of testis cancers present as clinical stage 1. They are only in the testes. There has been no spread anywhere else. The pathology of testis cancer usually is either seminoma or non-seminoma. For stage 1 seminoma, 85% of the cases, radical or kectomy, is the only thing they need. They don't need any further. They're actually cured with just radical or kectomy. But in non-seminoma, about 75% of them are cured by radical orchidectomy. So about 15 to 25% of patients with stage 1 testis cancer might recur. That's why we recommend active surveillance. Active surveillance means we actively would do survey on these patients with frequent imaging, lab tests for tumor markers, and exam to see if they do recur or not. Even if recurrence happens, they're still curable. Patients who have testicular cancer often have metastases or spread of the tumor to the retroperitoneal lymph nodes. These are lymph nodes located in the back of the abdomen. Uh, on occasion, we need to do surgery to remove these diseased lymph nodes. One of the techniques we use here at USC is called a uh, retroperitoneal lymph node dissection. Uh, the advantage is that uh, instead of going through the peritoneal cavity that contains the intestines, we keep the intestines within their sac and, and go to the back and remove these lymph nodes without uh, disturbing this peritoneal sac which contains the intestines. The advantage is that the patients can recover quicker, uh, resume their normal activity and normal diet much faster than the traditional operation that goes through the abdomen where the uh, intestines are disturbed. Here at USC, we're pioneers for many of the surgical techniques used for um, uh, t uh, testicular cancer surgery, or the RPLND. Uh, we have extensive experience in not only treating patients uh, who have spread of disease to the abdomen, but in particular patients who are being treated after chemotherapy. This is a very complex operation and there isn't a whole lot of experience around the country with this operation. Since it's a rare and complex procedure, uh, there aren't too many centers or institutions around the country with extensive experience. We're considered one of the highest volume centers on the West Coast for treatment of this disease. For testicular cancer, chemotherapy is a very important part of cure. So often it has to take place either after surgery has occurred or before. So in new adjuvant or adjuvant setting. Chemotherapy for testicular cancer consists of three drugs, bleomycin, etoposide, and cisplatin. We can do the treatment either on an inpatient or an outpatient basis, depending what is most convenient for our patients. Uh, we know that young patients have particular needs. They have young families, or they're in school, or they're working. And so to help patients through the chemo process, we have something called the Adolescent and Young Adult Program, AYA. They work specifically with our patients to help make sure that not only do they get their chemotherapy successfully, but that the rest of their life can continue on successfully beyond their treatment. Our testicular cancer patients get beyond exceptional medicine because we care for the whole person through our adolescent young adult AYA program to make sure that aspects of the life such as fertility and school and work are managed just as rigorously as uh, avoiding side effects of chemotherapy and preserving long-term health.